be in Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I'm going to give you a summary on the front end so you know where we're headed as we read and as we study this morning. Here's my summary as best that I could put it together for you, okay? For me, this is Paul's writing and he's praising the blessings that God has provided for us. So he's, he's saying, you know, God's awesome and thank you God for those blessings. And then he ties this together with the idea of predestination, which is what I'm going to try to tackle for you today. This concept that uh, I believe that we have some real misconceptions about. He also speaks about, uh, he's tying that awesomeness for the blessings to God's glory and the salvation of his people. So really we're moving toward, if you read this, this salvation piece. And then to end it all up, what rights do we have and privileges for that matter do we have as children of God because we're blessed, we meaning people who believe. So there's kind of a summary of what I think that we're jumping into today. And so as I read this, uh, you can have that in your background. Uh, praising God for the blessings He's provided. Tying that together with the idea of predestination, God's glory, salvation for His people, and the rights we have as children of God. Believers are blessed. Because God chose before creation to save us. Okay? That's where we're headed. So let's read from Ephesians 1, verses 3 through 14. <clears throat> blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as He chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before Him in love. He destined us for adoption as His children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace that He freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In Him we have a recognition through His blood, the forgiveness of trespasses, according to the riches of His grace that He lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, He has made known to us the mystery of His will, according to his good pleasures that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and on things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his will and counsel, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of His glory. In Him you also, when you heard the, tr the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in Him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of His glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God, Thanks be to God indeed. All right, so I tried to give you that summary on the front end so that we could tackle it. If you, like Margaret, grew up in a Presbyterian church, particularly before the Presbyterian church split into the Presbyterian church PSA and PCA and U USA, right? They had a division. Part because of this concept of predestination. There are other denominations that take on uh, this Calvinistic mindset. Those believers believe that you were kind of hand chosen. Okay? That those people who receive God and receive His grace and His mercy and receive salvation through Christ were already hand picked. Well, for me, what that does is remove free will from the equation, right? Paul's writing them, and I don't think he's writing them telling them, well, you've been handpicked and no one else can come to Christ. What he's saying is you've been handpicked, you meaning this body of Christ, these people, you as humanity, right? Because it didn't say goats and pigs were picked. It said you were picked so that you might receive Christ. 
what's the key here? In order to receive something, you have to what? You have to be given it. Given it. And in order to receive something, you can choose to refuse it. Unless it's like government mandated or wife mandated or something. But right? It is what it is. So, Shauna could offer me her Bible. She could offer it to me, right? And I have the option of picking it up and taking it, receiving it with free will. Or I could tell her, Shonda, I don't need your Bible, and or I don't want your Bible, or you keep your Bible, and I can reject that. And rejection is not negative. Rejection is an honest response to a question, right? Thank you, ma'am. So... The, the bottom line here, Paul is writing to the Ephesians because the Ephesians have kind of been struggling with some concepts. They've been getting these teachings that Israel was the chosen nation. And if you're uh, Ephesian, you're kind of scratching your head going, okay, so we're not really part of all this that's going on. Some of us are ne'er-do-wells, etc. How do we feed into this? If we've already been picked, then I'm just going to go act how I'm going to act and it'll all shake out in the end, right? If I know I'm not getting in, why do the work? That's kind of the mindset of some people. And that's not what this concept of predestination really was about. If uh, you are in some other face, they even put some numbers to it. 144,000 were the chosen, right? If you're a Jehovah's Witness, well, shoot. There's plenty of room in heaven in that joint because there ain't going to be many of them there. Just saying. And that's not to say that a number of 144,000 is good, bad, or indifferent. They chose to put a number on it. Just as some Christian uh, denominations and schools of thought have chosen to put an idea of predestination into the mix. You have been chosen ahead of time to receive this. And so I want to read this part again uh, from uh, verse uh, 3. Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who given thanks to God, bless you, we're thanking you, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as He chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before Him in love. He chose us before creation. Us meaning humanity, right? Because when we read who has blessed us, the us isn't the ones who are chosen. The us are the group of people who are chosen. So, some believers believe in a misinterpretation of predestination. That is my, uh, my study leads me there. They see it as if God made a choice to give some and leave out others. Truly, predestination points to God's all-encompassing love for humanity. Humanity is the us, as opposed to, Wanda, you're one of the us. Wanda will be saved. She's going to know Jesus Christ. Wanda gets in. Sorry, Coley, for your luck, because you weren't chosen. I don't know what happens, right? That's not where we go with predestination and free will. So I want to teach for a minute and leave that word predestination. Let's talk about free will for a minute because that's the exact polar opposite, right? So God's granted human beings with the power to make their own ethical decisions because we're really talking about ethical decisions here. We're talking about how we interact with the world. Shonda offered me her Bible. I said, no thanks. That's not necessarily an ethical issue, but it is a chance for me to make a choice as to whether or not I'm going to receive that. Good versus evil, right versus wrong. When we as humanity have a free will, we have the opportunity to do good or bad. It is a choice, right? Unless you're truly mentally ill, you have the ability to make decisions that either glorify God or turn your back to Him. Virtue or wickedness. We have the ability, we choose to live a virtuous life, a life that people would look at and say is godly, and that is ordained, and that is touched by the hand of God. Or we can live some life of wickedness where there's just a mean spirit about us. Salvation 
in choosing to rely on Christ's work on the cross, we can choose salvation or not. A lot of people hear the word of God. That's what we have the TV ads for, right? That's why you drag your friend on Easter or Christmas Eve to worship. Um, that's why we have missionaries. They go out into the world and spread the gospel message so that people can hear it, but they don't have to receive it. Think about all the things that we're told, right? My uh, oldest son tells me some outlandish tales from time to time. And I can either choose to receive or reject that as a truth. Because that's really what we're talking about, church, is truth, right? When we talk about salvation and Christ's work on the cross, we have a choice. I don't have to follow Jesus. I can stand before you today if I want to, if I want to, and reject him. I'm not a puppet. I can go tell you, Jeff, to go pound sand and take your Lord with you. It's a free choice. I get to make that. That wasn't predestined. The Lord didn't sit back in, in the, an infinite time and go, I'm going to make sure Cam rejects me on certain certain date. No, that's not it. We're not puppets and God's not a puppeteer. But we have to acknowledge this free will. It's up to each of us to decide which path we'll pursue and how we will let that manifest itself in our daily lives. Don't get caught up in destined and the words that Paul uses to mean that you have been specifically pointed out at the um, uh, peril of other people. Nor is there this finite number of spaces in God's kingdom. It is free will. When it says that he has chosen you, the you, the us, is humanity. Not Billy Bob. So where does that lead us this morning? Paul is trying to help the church at um, Ephesus to understand what they should be teaching and how they should be receiving and giving thanks. Because really what he's telling them in part is to, I want you to understand and remember the blessings that God has given us. He's granted us. This salvation piece that we have been offered, been given through God's grace and our acceptance of it through free will, that's, that's an amazing gift, right? Because the opposite of that is wickedness. You get one shot, church, to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior right up until the time that you're called home. If you believe in your heart that Jesus is, is your key to salvation and that he died on the cross for your sins, past, present, and future, you have an appointed place in heaven. Appointed not meaning you were picked back in an infinite time, meaning an appointed place that you're part of the body of Christ and that you are part of this concept of humanity, which is from the group that Jesus worked for on the cross and God had handpicked. The difference in predestination for us as a peoples versus a decision of predestination for one. So where do I want you to go with this? I want you to go with my summary. Paul praises God for the blessings he's provided. Hey, just thank you, Lord. Thank you for the things that you have done for us. Then he ties together some ideas, some of them more difficult to understand, some of them commonsensical. He ties this idea of predestination to God's glory. God, you are great and mighty. And then he ties it to salvation through Jesus Christ and the rights we have as children of God. You know, it is our right. Let me say this, the difference between a right and a privilege. Your driver's license is a privilege. It can and will be taken away if you drive poorly. It's a privilege. You do not have in Virginia a right to a driver's license. You, however, do have a right to freedom of religion. 
You may attend any church that you choose to. You may attend no church. You may choose, here's that concept of choice again, any of those things that move toward worship. That's a right. Driver's license, privilege. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have a right to heaven and the kingdom of God. God said that plainly. If you accept me through my son Jesus Christ and you know me that way, you too shall inherit heaven and earth. So, Paul's letting them know you have some rights that are specific to you as believers in Jesus Christ. And you also have a choice to accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior or not. That's where we're going with this today. So if there's someone in your life who you know is struggling with their relationship with the Lord, or they do not yet know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, Share with them that they have a choice, a free will choice. That, yeah, maybe their marriage is in a mess. Maybe they've been fired from their last three jobs. Maybe Satan's got them smooth by the tail and is using drugs and alcohol to destroy their life. It may be that they're in a season of change. It may be that they're struggling with who they are as a person. They may be in a world of hurt but they still get to make a choice to accept Christ Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, which gives them the right to eternal salvation from the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid of the gospel message. Don't be afraid to tackle tougher tougher issues. Don't be afraid when somebody comes and says this, Well, it says chosen. How do I know if I'm chosen or not? Open your Bible and read it with them. I hope I've given you some clues as to where Paul was headed. There are many theologians that would say that where I just took you today is incorrect. There were others that would tell you that that's spot on. Just understand it's a difference between being predestined, pre-chosen as individuals or churches or denominations Versus humanity being chosen overall as the group of people from whom God um, has offered that salvation. Because he offered it to all. So, let me tie this up a little bow. I had a conversation one time with a guy who had gone to church for quite some time. And I was way young in my ministry. And it wasn't anybody y'all would know. Not from around here. I had a conversation with them about what makes you so sure that you have been chosen. What makes you so sure that you have this thing, salvation? He said, because what you're giving me is a cyclical argument, right? You tell me this. Sean, can I borrow your Bible again? Right? He says, your argument's cyclical, uh, Cam. You tell me, I know it's true because it's in the Bible. I know it's true because it's written right here. And then you turn around and tell me that who wrote it was divinely handpicked by God. He says, so your argument's cyclical. Well, I believe this because it's in this book. Well, it's in this book, so I believe it. I believe it because it's in this book. And then we say, it's in this book, so I believe it. He says, that's a cyclical argument. Meaning it just goes in a circle. Thank you, dear. It just goes in a circle. There's no substance to it. I said, okay, I'll grant you all that. That is a cyclical argument until you allow me to finish my presentation to you. He goes, well, what's that? I said, I have made a personal choice. Listen to what I said again. I made a personal choice to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And I do that stepping out on faith. Faith, church, is what breaks that cyclical argument. Because it is. On its face, I have taught logic before and I've taken classes on logic. Although you'll be saying, 
Oh, cam logical, great, right? But it is a cyclical argument. You're defending your argument by defending your argument. But you break that cycle by saying, I believe what is in the Bible to be true because I have faith in what it says. And because I have faith in what it says, I believe in what is in the Bible. So I know that Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. Notice again, I said, I know because I believe. If you have faith, and you have hope, you have salvation, because salvation is in the same boat with those two things. Don't be afraid to give people your witness and testimony. Don't be afraid to say, yeah, I believe in this because I've read the divine word of God, inspired word of God, and I can speak with authority on it. If we do that, church, we can help guide people away from these thoughts of, of being handpicked, this predestination. We can get past these thoughts of, well, how can I receive salvation if I don't think I'm part of this group? The church has got to get away from this us versus them. We have to get back to it is us and us. My prayer for you this week, is that you spend just a little bit of time back in Ephesians 1. If you have the opportunity, I would encourage you and invite you to read the entire chapter start to finish. Because Paul is really trying to reach out to the Ephesians and give them some guidance and tell them how their, recept their reception of Christ's salvation should be met. Amen? Amen.